Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a nuclear engineer and consultant specializing in science communication. It's Wednesday, November 15th, and it's time for your Fusion News Update. Stories today include, one, first plasma fired up at world's largest fusion reactor. Two, fusion diary in the Asia Times. Three, focused energy partners with LLNL on a target design for inertial fusion energy. Four, petition calls on UK to save jet fusion experiment from closure. Five, joint statement between DOE and the UK Department for Energy, Security, and Net Zero concerning a strategic partnership to accelerate fusion. I also have a bonus for you at the end, so stick around. One, first plasma fired up at world's largest fusion reactor. On October 23rd, Japan's JT-60SA tokamak achieved first plasma, becoming the world's largest operating tokamak. This super advanced upgrade to the Japanese JT-60 tokamak occurred as part of a 2007 agreement between the European Union and Japan in support of ITER, the international fusion experiment being built in southern France. JT-60SA is now the largest tokamak in the world, with about 60% more plasma volume than the Joint European Taurus, or JET, in the UK. It was planned as a stepping stone to ITER, which will have about six times the plasma volume of JT-60SA, and will test technology for ITER. The plasmas in JT-60SA are planned to be the most energetic, sustained magnetic fusion experiments to date, with 200 million degrees Celsius, or about 15 kilo electron volts, plasmas sustained for about 100 seconds. In comparison, the record-holding experiments at the Chinese tokamak east were closer to 100 million degrees Celsius, which is below the temperatures at which ITER and other break-even devices would expect to reach. The construction of JT-60SA had several setbacks, coming online around seven years later than anticipated, after issues with supply chains, the devastating 2011 earthquake in Japan, and recent technological issues with the magnets that experts at the Japanese National Institutes for Quantum Science and Technology had to spend two years carefully diagnosing and repairing. These final issues with electrical insulation in the magnets have helped ITER engineers rework plans for operational tests there. JT-60SA will spend around two years carefully working up to the planned ITER-related physics experiments and will run deuterium plasmas, which is one of the isotopes planned for fueling ITER and other DT-fueled fusion concepts. Two, Fusion Diary in the Asia Times. The Asia Times is running a Fusion Diary series in which their science editor, Jonathan Tenenbaum, explores different aspects of the current state of the fusion industry. The articles so far have focused on the emergence of the United Kingdom as a leader in fusion, with FIA members General Fusion, First Light Fusion, and Tokamak Energy all being featured. The most recent article looks at the history of the spherical tokamak, a variant of the tokamak design that tries to minimize the size of the center of the donut and the tokamak aspect ratio to create a nearly spherical plasma configuration. STEP, the spherical tokamak for energy production, is the current plan for the UK's government-backed first electricity-producing fusion reactor. While tokamak energy is not directly referenced in the article, the images are largely provided by tokamak energy as their fusion design is a spherical tokamak. Three, focused energy partners with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory on a target design for inertial fusion energy. Fusion Industry Association member Focused Energy is teaming up with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory to develop designs for the company's targets. Focused Energy is a German-American company with an inertial confinement fusion concept that will use plastic fusion targets filled with deuterium tritium fuel compressed by lasers. The National Lab will use codes and other tools developed in support of experiments at the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, to help Focus Energy to optimize their target designs. This work will be done as part of a DOE strategic partnership project agreement. Four, petition calls on UK to save jet fusion experiment from closure. Over 900 individuals from around the world, including many scientists from both public and private organizations studying fusion, have signed a petition urging the UK Atomic Energy Authority to work with the European fusion community to extend the operational lifetime of the joint European Taurus, or JET. Those of us following this story will notice that the status of JET has come up a lot recently, and this petition is just the latest in a few news stories about the final experiments at JET, the planned decommissioning of the device, and the future of UK and EU fusion research. 
Jet's lifetime, including the planned shutdown next year, was determined in 2016 as part of the planned ETER timeline. A major complication in the situation is the UK withdrawal from the European Union and a recent UK decision to not be involved in the EU organization that manages their fusion program. Previously, JET was operated in conjunction between the UK EA and Eurofusion. Delays have pushed plans for the first plasma in ITER to 2025, so there is now a gap between experiments, even including those at JT60SA, which is still being readied for ITER applicable experiments. Additionally, JET has been the only device operating with deuterium tritium fuel, which is the fuel that ITER intends to use. Most devices use pure deuterium, only one of the relevant hydrogen isotopes to reduce operational complications of working with tritium. ITER DT experiments are currently not planned until 2035. However, the previously reported decommissioning would provide the fusion community important experience and knowledge on the management of the materials from a device operating with tritium, making any future for JET a continued part of the fusion knowledge pool. Five, joint statement between DOE and the UK Department for Energy Security and Net Zero concerning a strategic partnership to accelerate fusion. This week, the US Department of Energy and the UK Department for Energy Security and Net Zero announced a partnership focused on coordinating the two nations' efforts for demonstrating and commercializing fusion energy. The agreement will advance both the Biden administration's decadal vision for fusion and the UK's fusion strategy, mainly through the efforts of the DOE's Fusion Energy Science Program and the UK Atomic Energy Authority. A joint coordinating committee will be announced soon and will likely meet for the first time early next year. This follows recent news of both the UK and the US establishing fusion regulatory frameworks. Finally, check out the bonus fusion news this week, a podcast from The Guardian that talks about using AI for fusion energy research, an article in Knowable about the promise of fusion, and the final shipment of magnet supports from China to ITER. That's all for fusion news this week. Stay tuned for our next update. Please like and subscribe for more fusion news and check out the links in the description if you want further information.